Hello everyone, my name is Fernando Nardi, I'm a professor of uh, hydrology, hydraulic engineering and water systems specializing in uh, climate change and natural hazard. I'm the former director of the Water Dog Center, the multidisciplinary water and natural disaster center that uh, supported the Charisma project for the engineering part. And I'm actually just moved to University of Rome Tor Vergata. So the topic we're discussing with this first lecture is a series of four is hydro meteo climate risk and the importance of understanding, assessing, quantifying and mapping the impacts of climate change and natural natural disasters on cultural heritage. So we try to bring with the series of lecture an engineering perspective on the importance of uh, the profile of the risk manager as related to the engineering content, knowledge and methods we have for mitigating the devastating impacts of uh, natural disasters. So these are the, the summary. This is the first uh, lecture on climate risk. We bring you with definition and the impacts uh, some uh, numbers uh, of the cost, economic cost and social cost of climate change and disasters on uh, our world. And then we have uh, other three series uh, of uh, lectures on the assessment, management and the mitigate, mitigation engineering. So first one, climate risk. We talk about natural catastrophes and climate driven hydrometry risk as uh, one of the most devastating uh, phenomena affecting our earth and cultural heritage in particular. We uh, seek in this lecture to show you the impacts and then we we'll bring you some references about the definitions so that we try to share the glossary of terms, the major concept and knowledge that are important for the risk manager profile. I'm sure following this series of lectures and video presentations from Charisma that you are aware that the engineering perspective is not the main one, is not the only one. We need the multidisciplinary knowledge. We need data and tools from a diverse integrated set of disciplines, from academic to business, to understand and put in action the optimal actions for mitigating effects, nuisance effects on natural disasters. So the goal is to not simplify, but to merge the major engineering concepts for the education and for the support of the activities uh, characterizing the risk manager. Some numbers. I told you we're going to talk about impacts. Uh, and uh, these slides taken from uh, um, the, the, the yearly reports of large reinsurance companies uh, estimating the economic impacts of uh, natural disasters. They like to call it NATCAT, natural catastrophes, just to share with you some acronyms. We see from this plot uh, that floods, storms, earthquakes are the major sources of impacts on our world. And you can see starting from the early 2000, the increasing numbers in the order of like the, the billions that are affecting our world with floods and earthquakes that are the most devastating natural disasters. And as you see uh, from the text in the slide, uh, what we like to call the geography of uh, climate impacts uh, is not only um, you know, result of the biophysical dynamics. The natural dynamics 
that uh, characterize the processes impacting our Earth, like the water systems that, uh, after intense rainfall, provide inundation impacts on our Earth, or the tectonic movements and the earthquake on other biophysical processes. These are the sources. And then uh, we need to account uh, for the facts and the specification of uh, the territory of the land where, where these impacts occur. So when we talk about impacts, uh, we need to account for the biophysical phenomena and also for the social, economic and cultural factors. Because the same biophysical dynamics uh, may have a completely different effect uh, depending on the geography on the socio-economic and cultural specification of the region, of the country, where the phenomena occur. So, just give you numbers. In 2023, we accounted for more 250 billion of US dollars and more than 70,000 fatalities all over the world for natural disasters. Earthquakes in Turkey and Syria Earthquakes are usually the most uh, impacting factors for losses of life and also damages to property and also considering the devastating effects uh, also of the positive event uh, conditions uh, are usually the most uh, uh, you know uh, impacting humanitarian disasters but also the hydrometeo the the the, the one of the most like uh, the, the focus in the, this uh, first lecture, uh, also the hydrometeo phenomena are major factors of devastations, like thunderstorms in North America, in Europe, have been really destructive, with losses you know, almost approaching $100,000 million. And also I'd like to mention the fact, and this was uh, you know, really in the news in 2023, the increased average temperatures, the increased number of heat waves, the fact that temperature, climate change driven phenomena are increasing and uh, dry droughts, lack of water and um, increased temperature are really a major factors of human losses. People die because of heat waves and most importantly also impacts uh, on our food production systems, on our agriculture. Unexpected and peak temperatures are really uh, uh, governing increasing issues uh, on uh, the, the management of our food resources, the food we eat and the food security issues, especially in some countries which are driving famine and loss of lives because of lack of food. So, these slides um, taken from a report of an Australian agency, uh, I put it to share with you that the impacts, again, are not only engineering biophysical phenomena, but are strictly related to the social, economic and cultural factors. If you see this list of natural disasters, heat waves, bushfires, droughts, floods, storms, cyclones, earthquakes, tsunamis, landslides and, peace, and pests, if you see the description without that I read it for you, if you try to read it, you understand how climate driven disasters are then need to be understood and managed considering the local specifications, not only geological, hydrological, or land properties that are still factors connected to the engineering part, the quantification of the landscape properties and processes. As you see, these are always related to the dynamics, to the features, to the behaviors of society of people, that, that people is what we need to understand are the social, cultural and economic component. 
So this relationship between human behavior, between urban planning, between the way we manage and develop our urban systems, our economy and our society, are a major condition governing how natural disasters may impact our life, our economy, our properties. So, if you see this uh, global map of disasters occurred in recent years, you, you're going to see in this slide not only the types, geophysical events, earthquake, tsunami, volcanic activity, meteorological events, storms, and winds, cyclones, hydrological events like floods, mass movement like landslides, and other climate events like extreme temperatures, droughts, fires. These are the major types, but again, if you see the economic, num the economic estimates here, you can recognize a pattern that is related to the geography of where the disasters may occur. And I don't have time in this first lecture to share with you the fact that there is an interlink, like a relationship how climate is shaping society, how much is society shaping climate. The way people move and behave, also the way humans have developed driving climate change, driving uh, uh, the changes of temperature, rainfall regimes. There is an interrelationship between how humans develop uh, the, the place they live and how climate is now shaping back how humans live now and will live in the future. To make this more clear, I mentioned this interrelationship, uh, for example, as uh, human water dynamics. People live along rivers where floods may occur. When a big flood occur, people may move, adapt and understand that this event may happen again. This uh, is also called social geology dynamics. Uh, I mentioned to you some scientific uh, novel understanding of how humans have been shaping society and the landscape as much as the landscape and the climate impacts are shaping society again. So why increasing impacts of climate disasters? The main reasons have been economic development, population growth, urbanization, and a higher concentration of assets in exposed areas. So if you remember the, the previous slide in which you see these increasing estimates of uh, economic losses given to natural catastrophes, these are given again by climate change increased impacts, the biophysical components, but also, I would say also mainly in the last 50 years, an increased development and growth of population and urban assets, with the not always, I would say also even almost never, proper understanding and management of where we should put our assets. So most of the risky areas in the world, like along rivers, along the coast, or in earthquake pro areas, those areas have been developed in the last 50 years without proper understanding and mapping or the most risky areas. Okay, so no, uh, it's not easy and I you know in this short first lecture to give you all the definitions, but I want you to look at the links and also the additional material we put in uh, the repository of these uh, series of lectures so that you will learn more about the, some of the terms I've been using in this uh, presentation. Natural catastrophes or NATCAT, like the insurance business like to call, climate change, hydrology, floods, earthquakes, and also climate, hydrometeor extremes, DRR, disaster risk reduction, sustainable development goals, SDGs. You can find in the link in this slide, in this presentation, all the sources and definitions and terms 
is good you learn for becoming a risk manager. Thank you.